Welcome, folks, to this very special edition of 9-11 Freefall. I am your host, Andrew Steele, and I'm sad to announce that on August 22nd, we lost a great patriot and a great voice for 9-11 Truth. Dr. Robert Bowman passed away after a long battle with cancer, and for those of you who aren't aware of this person or the impact he has had on the 9-11 Truth movement and on the anti-war movement, let me tell you a little bit about who he was. Um, Robert was the former director of the Department of Defense the Star Wars programs during the Ford and Carter administrations, and he was a person who blew the whistle on the U.S. government's intentions to use the Star Wars missile defense program as a first strike offensive weapon during the 1980s. Um, now, as noted in a write-up by Phil Restino, who is one of the people we'll be hearing from later on in the show who will be talking about Dr. Bowman, he not only gave up a comfortable livelihood working in private industry, but Dr. Bowman also put his very life at risk to numerous death threats over the years so as to help keep the world safe from the massive destruction capabilities of the U.S. government's Star Wars systems. Um, for the decades to follow, Robert Bowman has worked tirelessly and continuously for peace and justice. And Robert was a longtime member of Vietnam Veterans Against the War and Veterans for Peace. He served as the keynote speaker for four of that organization's annual national conventions, and he also received the Veterans for Peace uh, President's Medal and was the founder and national commander of an organization called the Patriots, which was made up of military and government service veterans throughout the United States. Uh, Robert Bowman worked hard to bring together veterans who identified themselves with the political left and, the, and those on the political right, and he was a big advocate of putting aside political ideologies in order to unite and fight against the unjust wars of the post-9-11 world. And I have an article up at 911freefall.com where he wrote about this. Uh, the article's called Left and Right Together, so you can click the link uh, up at the site and, and read it there. But that is a message that resounds today, not just in, in fighting the wars, but in, ex in exposing the truth about 9-11 as well. Uh, soon after the attacks of 9-11, Dr. Robert Bowman publicly spoke out about them uh, as both an engineer with doctorate degrees in aeronautical and nuclear engineering and as a former USAF interceptor pilot. His expertise and credibility in regards to the impossibility of the U.S. government's theory uh, trying to explain the complete destruction of Towers 1, 2, and 7 as well as the stand down of, of NORAD air defenses for more than 90 minutes while the U.S. was under attack on the morning of 9-11 can't be dismissed. Um, and Robert Bowman was out there pretty early in the movement as a public figure telling the truth and questioning what he saw about the event. And that took a lot of guts, folks, given the social climate that was created by the shock of 9-11 in the years that followed it. And in a time now, even 12 years later, when we still see politicians and government officials on C-SPAN squirming and stuttering and pretending as if they, as if they don't know what Building 7 was when they're asked about it, Robert Bowman served as one of those rare people who actually did his job and who did not use his retirement and his public platform just to protect a career fraternity. Okay, it's obvious he cared about people and that he cared about our country. He cared about doing the right thing. Okay, he was the kind of person that the politicians and government people I just mentioned pretend to be. See, Robert Bowman was special because you can tell, even though I didn't know him personally, you could tell that he realized what is really important early on in life, early enough to actually shed away all that worry and self-interest and do something with his knowledge to truly defend freedom at a time in history when it's under attack. And I don't mean the phony attacks on freedom that the government and media drum up to sell us wars throughout the years. I mean an actual attack on freedom that continues today, that continues to take place from within, all right, from where it usually comes from in history. And Robert had conviction. That's something those who perpetrated the attacks on 9-11 and those who cover up the truth about them lack. And that's why they're ultimately going to fall in the end. And Dr. Robert Bowman didn't just limit himself in the last decade to simply speaking out about 9-11 either. As I said, he was an avid anti-war activist, and he did uh, run in presidential primaries to try to do some good from within the political process. He first ran for the Reform Party nomination back in 2000, and then for the Democratic Party nomination in 2004. And he ran for Congress in 2006, and he did get the Democratic nomination for it. He didn't win that race, but he did pretty well considering 
considering his opponent's large uh, financial war chest and the fact that Robert Bowman was openly questioning 9-11 uh, while the media was doing everything it could at that time to brainwash the public and demonize anyone who didn't swallow the government's official story. So we're going to focus squarely on Dr. Robert Bowman today and we're going to be playing uh, clips of him from various speeches and interviews he's given. As well, we're going to be featuring people in the movement who knew Bob or who worked with him or who were big fans of his. And uh, they're going to be stopping by to, to give their thoughts on him. And you'll recognize some of them as folks who have been guests on this show before and others you may not have heard here before, but I'll be looking to bring them on 9-11 Freefall in the future. And I regret that I never had Robert Bowman on as a guest on this program. However, the show is not that old, and I guess he's been sick for quite a long time, so I don't think it could have happened anyway. But I think the spirits of people like Robert Bowman live on even after they die. And that's why we preserve their memory and their work, so that people in the future can be inspired by who they were and what they did. So hence why we're doing this program today. Um, so... As we take our 10 seconds of silence like we do every week to remember the victims of 9-11, their families, and the people who died in the wars that followed 9-11, we're also going to remember Dr. Robert Bowman too and everything he's done to try to end those wars and to shine a light on the crime of the century. So we're going to take those 10 seconds of silence to remember him as well right now. And that's 10 seconds. Now, folks, as we move forward in our special hour-and-a-half-long tribute to Robert Bowman, you'll notice in the clips of him that I'll be playing that he talks about elements of the 9-11 crime and the wars that followed 9-11 that we don't normally go into here on this show since they don't fall within our very specific focus on the scientific evidence proving that the Twin Towers and Building 7 were brought down in a controlled demolition. Robert Bowman talked about the evidence presented by architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth, and he drew from his own engineering knowledge, but he also talked about 9-11 from his own experience as a former military pilot and as somebody who was a government insider and an observer of what was happening to our country. While the mission and focus here at 9-11 Freefall still remains the same, it's largely because of Robert Bowman's contribution that a lot of our audience exists. So, in honor of him, this week's episode will touch upon those other elements of the 9-11 crime and the post-9-11 wars through Robert Bowman's voice and perspective so that I can present to you a clear image of who this man was and what he stood for. I'm Dr. Bob Bowman, Lieutenant Colonel, United States Air Force, retired. Flew 101 combat missions in Vietnam and directed all the DOD Star Wars programs under Presidents Ford and Carter. My PhD is in aeronautics and nuclear engineering from Caltech. And I did my postdoctoral work at the von Karman Institute in Brussels, Belgium in finite element analysis. I taught at five colleges and universities serving as department head and assistant dean. Finite element analysis is the solution of complex physical problems using advanced mathematics, things like turbulent flow or structural failure. I first became aware that there was a problem with the government's official conspiracy theory on 9-11. That very morning, when I was watching what was happening on television, and my wife says I kept saying over and over, where are the interceptors? And then, of course, when the first of the towers actually started falling down, I just said, this can't happen. It can't happen. And then the other tower came down, and I said, this violates the laws of physics. It can't happen. Those aircraft and those fires could not cause those buildings to come down in that way. So uh, I guess I was a very early skeptic. And then, of course, the coup de grace for me was when I found out that Building 7 had collapsed later that day. And when I saw Building 7 come down, uh, to me, 
Building 7, the fact that its collapse was announced prematurely by the BBC and CNN, and just seeing it come down in what for all the world looks like a, a perfect controlled demolition of an intact building. I mean, that's what I call a smoking gun. And you put all these things together and it is absolutely obvious to me that we've been lied to, that the government's official story is physically impossible, and that's why we absolutely need a new investigation of 9-11. Hi, my name is Phil Restino, and I'm the uh, coordinator for the Central Florida chapter of Veterans for Peace uh, here in Central Florida, uh, the chapter of which uh, was Bob Bowman's home chapter. We're here today to uh, recognize uh, Bob Bowman and, and give a little bit of our experiences with him. Uh, right now, I'd uh, like to introduce uh, Kathy Bracewell of... Uh, the East Central Florida chapter of Code Pink and uh, uh, turn it over to her as, as we've all worked together for, uh, since, uh, uh, I guess, 2005, late 2005. Uh, Kathy? Thank you, Phil. I'm Kathy Bracewell. And yes, that's correct. I uh, started our local chapter of Code Pink of East Central Florida in late 2005, and it was shortly thereafter in January of 2006 that we held a town hall meeting up in Ormond Beach, Florida, and by the way, our chapter cover of Code Pink covers the greater Daytona Beach area, basically. Anyway, I was uh, our Code Pink chapter was instrumental in um, supporting Veterans Central Florida Vets for Peace with this town hall meeting where Dr. Bob Bowman was going to be um, there and he was going to be in a, a debate with our Congressman John Micah. Uh, Congressman Micah did not show up and so we just had an 8 by 10 picture of him up there at the podium. And of course, Bob Bo Colonel Bob Bowman did show up and that was my first meeting with him. He was the most articulate inspiring speaker that I have heard in uh, many years regarding anti-war, peace, um, getting the people to unite against crimes against humanity. He was so, all I can say is he inspired me very, very much. And he later became a rather close personal friend. Um, we saw him many times after that. Uh, we had little lunches with him. We met at different events. I was to hear him speak on many occasions, and of course when I was available, I was working full time then, but when I was available to attend anything where he was speaking, I was going to go, because like I say, he inspired me on a personal level. <clears throat> I was a Vietnam protester, and I was once again protesting these wars of aggression in the, in the present day, and Bob Bowman inspired me. We, we did take a... a a motorhome trip to Washington, D.C. in 2007. I believe it was September of 2007. I took the trip. I was the only lady. I was with Phil, Dr. Bowman, and um, Dave Katz, all in his RV, and we went up to Washington, D.C. and stayed with some wonderful people that were friends with Bob's, Sue and Phil Wheaton, and uh, it was just it was a it, it was a once in a lifetime trip, and I got to know Bob very very well. He talked so much of his wife and his dog and his sons and daughters. He was truly a family man. He was a true patriot, and that was quite obvious. He loved his country. He had served his country, and he did not want to see this country go down the tubes. and And it was quite evident by the way he spoke. His speeches were were very interesting in that they were kind of uh, unique. He would use different ways of presenting material uh, that kind of piqued your curiosity and would keep anybody, as far as I was concerned, interested. And uh, I, I, I'm just going to miss Bob. I'm going to miss him so much. I do have my memories, thank goodness. I have multiple pictures. I've already made a collage, and I'm working on a scrapbook right now. But uh, I will definitely miss Dr. Bob Bowman. To me, he was a true patriot and an inspiring person. Thank you so much. I'm going to pass it back off to Phil. 
Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. And yes, we sure were fortunate to be here in Florida where we got the chance to, to work with Bob quite a bit. Um, I'm proud to say he was a, a, a member of our Central Florida chapter of Veterans for Peace. And Bob is a, he was a war veteran, a career Air Force guy, fighter pilot, served in Vietnam, saw the horrors of war, and, uh, and later became a, a, a Vietnam veteran against the war. And uh, that was one of the earlier organizations of veterans speaking against these wars. And uh, later went on to join Veterans for Peace when that organization popped up in the mid-'80s and uh, was a celebrated member. Uh, one thing I do want to stress about Bob, you know, he was a giant amongst men, and, and uh, you know, everyone knows him for his great uh abilities and, and, and background and the former director of the Star Wars programs and later became a whistleblower to um, uh, uh, sound the alarm and, and maybe even save the world in a sense when, when the, the, it had come out that the Reagan administration wanted to use that program as a uh, first strike offensive weapon. But... Um, what folks what I want folks to know about Bob Bowman was he saw the great harm that we the American people are doing to ourselves with 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 this artificial left right divide and uh, I encourage people to get on the internet and type in left and right together by Robert M Bowman uh, and that came out in July 2010. And what people don't know is, yes, Bob was a celebrated member of Veterans for Peace, an organization made up of uh, veterans that are uh, uh, traditionally politically on the left. But in 2009, when the Oath Keepers uh, came to be, uh, another veterans organization who are predominantly uh, uh, made up of military veterans that are uh, uh, politically to the right, uh, Bob joined that organization, too, and worked hard to bring members of both veterans' organizations, uh, both organizations made up of American military veterans who s swore the oath to the same Constitution, to put our respective uh, differences aside and come together as veterans to try to stop these illegal, unconstitutional wars. Uh, to, to look after veterans' concerns uh, amongst, that shared amongst both uh, the left and the right. And, uh, and I, I believe strongly in Bob's message. I think the biggest problem this country faces is of our own making, and that's of the, the stubbornness of, of uh, the American people who are divided between Fox News and MSNBC, Republican and Democrat, liberal and conservative, uh, we're, 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 we're dooming ourselves, and uh, we've got to get back to uh, Bob's message and, and really think about what's going on here. Lieutenant Colonel Dr. Robert M. Bowman. We're in a situation in this country where a lot of folks don't want to admit that they're liberal or they're conservative or both because both have been sort of given a bad name, particularly by the major media. People on the far left and the far right of the political spectrum have been alienated and marginalized and ridiculed. But from my run for the presidency in year 2000. I covered the country and I talked to a lot of different folks and I learned that there's a great commonality between folks on the far left and the far right. And since then I have exploited that and have been trying to bring folks together in our common interest because Many of my talks have been co-sponsored by the Green Party and the Libertarian Party, for example. And uh, the Kucinich folks and the Ron Paul folks. 
And this, I think, is our hope for the future. Because if we stay splintered, we're not going to succeed in taking our country back. This is Richard Gage, AIA, architect and founder of Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth. I have been personally moved by Dr. Bob Bowman, and I was so saddened to hear of his loss. Um, he and I have shared the platform on a number of occasions to deliver the truth about 9-11 to the American people. Of course, Bob extends well beyond the issues of 9-11 to encompass uh, all of the draconian measures that have happened after 9-11 and some of the problems, of course, that extend back to his uh, career, back to the 70s in the, in the administrations and in the Pentagon and in his own uh, experience in Vietnam as a war hero. Uh, Bob gives, an, has, he has given electric, um, motivating campaign speeches that have had me gripped to my seat like no one else. And I don't know how the world is going to replace him. I have, I have no idea. I'm, uh, it's a huge loss for people who love freedom, for patriots. Uh, and yet he has left such a legacy of inspiration and education for all of us in the movement. I hope each of us can pick up one little piece of what he has left here for us and carry it forward and magnify it. He will have lit, lit a fire that will be his legacy, and I'm honored to be a part of it. You know, I signed that petition for architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth some time ago because as an engineer, and I have three degrees in engineering, uh, I know that the government story is an absolute lie. Totally convinced of it. Uh, there's a lot of people trying to convince me that uh, the government story is the truth, and they don't come close. I fully agree with what you guys are saying and uh, the evidence that you have come up with over the last several years uh, about uh, the thermite and the, the speed of collapse and all the details uh, just uh, clinch it, should clinch it for just about anybody, certainly does for me. The architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth have collected evidence from a number of sources that uh, prove conclusively, as far as I'm concerned, that uh, there was controlled demolition on that morning uh, with those three buildings. Yes, uh, my name is Lewis Wolf. I'm a 9-11 Truth activist here in Washington, D.C. Uh, I uh, uh, met Bob Bowman when he came to Washington, actually to Maryland, and at, uh, we had sponsored an event in Tacoma Park, Maryland, which is known as uh, Anti-Nuclear Maryland, and recently passed a, a piece of legislation to prevent uh, the... the uh, uh, having drones in, in, in Tacoma Park. Uh, and uh, he spoke at this event to which about 200 people showed up, and he had people on their feet uh, after his speech. It was a very inspiring speech about his, his background, his career in the, uh, in the government when he worked in the Reagan administration uh, in, a, in a secret capacity or program which involved uh, setting up... Um, uh, a program to use uh, 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 laser technology and, and so forth, which he exposed and later uh, became an out-and-out out peace activist and um, uh, wrote a famous letter to the, to the Pentagon, an open letter uh, calling for peace. Um, Bob is uh, a man we will miss uh, so sorely. Um, 
his amazing uh, dedication to peace. As a former military man, he who was a, a pilot, um, you know, had 101 combat missions in both Korea and Vietnam. So this is no uh, lightweight here, uh, who completely ch changed, uh, changed 180 degrees from what he had done. And uh, he, he and his wife Maggie uh, took their vehicle across the United States at their own cost um, to campaign for peace and for an end to the war economy. Um, you know, he's a profoundly deeply committed man, and uh, I, I, like everyone who knew him, will miss him dearly. Thank you very much. All right. Yeah, my name is uh, Steve White, and I've been affiliated with Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth and 9-11 Truth in general since uh, about '04, when I first realized there was a movement going on about this. And uh, actually, the first time I met Bob was not in person, but I went to see Barry's Wickers film, and when I got there kind of late and walked in and there was Bob's up on the screen saying larger than life this is treason and I practically cried I mean it was like the first time I had really heard anybody say anything that made any sense whatsoever you know and and I hear somebody of Bob's stature it really gave me an enormous amount of hope for the first time and, uh, anyway so a few years later uh, while we were involved in our petition uh, effort, having meetings at St. Mark's, we met Bob there, and a few of us went out to have lunch with him, and that was a memorable and wonderful, uplifting occasion, and I just thought Bob was the greatest hope we had in terms of getting a hold of this situation, and it's just very upsetting that he's gone. Uh, I've been very involved in just moving out of Ground Zero, where I lived for 40 years, obviously before it was ground zero and now I'm far away from all that and, and looking for a house and I just haven't been thinking of much else you know and I'm really thinking of Bob right now that's all I can say really it just knocked the knocked the wind out of me to hear this and I just want to say something in uh, Bob's behalf and what a great force for good he was in the world and how much he'll be missed Hello, this is Les Jamison. Uh, I live in New York City in Brooklyn, and uh, I've been active in the 9-11 Truth Movement uh, from January 2004 through uh, pretty much the current present time here, although the last couple of years have uh, been a little more scattered just for the uh, anniversary events. And uh, I first heard Bob Bowman speak I believe it was in the summer or the fall of 2005 at the uh, big conference held at the Manhattan Center in New York, uh, hosted by Jimmy Walter, produced by Jimmy Walter. It was called Confronting the Evidence. And Bob Bowman was one of the keynote speakers. And there he was up on this big stage. We had a big audience, hundreds and hundreds of people. It was filmed. And uh, he was a very impressive figure right then, uh, especially knowing his background, uh, being former military. And uh, well, he said some words that will be immortal here, which uh, he came right out and said, the events of 9-11 were an act of treason. And from there, Bob Bowman was a uh, an ongoing figure in the 9-11 truth movement. Uh, for many conferences and uh, many appearances, and uh, many uh, various symposiums throughout the years here. Uh, he came to New York several more times. Uh, the group that I was actively involved with hosted him for several events. One of them was a march throughout the city uh, where we went to several um, uh, major mainstream media outlets in New York, and we marched, oh gosh, at least a mile and a half through New York, and he was not well then, by the way, but uh, he made it anyway, and uh, uh, he was in great spirits, marching all up and down Manhattan to, uh, I think, first uh, the New York Times building, and from there up to NBC Studios, from then over to Fox Studios, and, uh, and a few others, and uh, he was just in great spirits. 
then he came a few times when he was um, uh, running for office as a congressional candidate in Florida, but he had also put together a phenomenal speech uh, that was um, like a depiction of what he would say if he were actually running for president. And he was phenomenal because uh, he combined his knowledge of uh, the Constitution, his knowledge of finance, and the knowledge of the Federal Reserve uh, issues, and of course of uh, foreign policy and and law and order. And, uh, you know, if he could have uh, even come close to being a, a national politician, uh, the, the national landscape of politics would be altogether different, that's for sure. Yes. Yeah, I'm from the uh, San Diego 9-11 Questions Meetup group. Um, can you give us a recap on your vision of uh, a new investigation into 9-11? Well, basically, new investigation will be completely independent of the White House. It will have oversight, probably by a few members of Congress, perhaps some former members like Senator Max Cleland, by people from the 9-11 Truth Movement, in, in particular Dr. David Ray Griffin, by Karen Breitweiser, Mindy Kleinberg, and the Jersey Girls, representing the families of victims, and by Sybil Edmonds and other whistleblowers in the FBI. They will investigate all the evidence, even that which seems to contradict the official conspiracy theory, and they will have no predetermined conclusions as to who the conspirators were, unlike the former commission. Can you, uh, can you also speak to those who, who would say that, uh, that uh, bringing up 9-11 and asking questions about 9-11 uh, is hurting the, uh, the victim's family members? What do you say to that? Well, if, if you see some of the videos about 9-11, uh, a good many of them uh, featured family members, and if it wasn't for family members, there would have been no Kane Hamilton Zelikow commission in the first place. It was only with great pressure from the families of victims that the Bush administration reluctantly had any commission whatsoever. But then, of course, they sabotaged it. And there are family members still demanding that we get at the truth. They, above all, deserve to have the truth come out. Uh, my name is David Meiswinkel, and I'm a uh, former police officer and currently an attorney. I do mostly criminal defense in New Jersey, and uh, I uh, was in, got involved with architects and engineers a few years ago. Uh, I found them to be the uh, the best organization in the world, at least in my opinion, for forensics evidence, uh, uh, scientific evidence at the, uh, the World Trade Center complex, their analysis, and I became involved in uh, organizing New Jersey for the 10th anniversary. We held a number of vigils. Uh, Throughout that time, I've been exposed to uh, a number of people in that organization, and uh, some of them I met directly, and most of them through videos, etc. And um, one in particular is Bob Bowman, who to me passed, and he's held in the highest esteem by people uh, that uh, know what they're talking about as far as 9/11. Uh, he was a, a military hero and a, a patriot of the highest. Uh, he uh, ran for office, and uh, he really called it like it was or is. Uh, his one of his quotes is that the truth of 9/11 is that we don't know the truth about 9/11, and we should. And he called for a, a 9/11 investigation. Uh, that was one of the, his his themes. He also was a very strong advocate, a proactive advocate for uh, things such as impeachment and or uh, arrest. Of, uh, of, of the people that were in the administration at that time. Uh, he also uh, was very interesting in the need to investigate not just 9-11, but the cover-up of 9-11. And he pointed out that uh, 
often in the cover-up is when the guys slip up. Uh, for example, with Nixon and what he did, or with Clinton and what he did, uh, it was in the cover-ups that they uh, they got themselves into some trouble and things started unraveling and the truth started to become exposed. Uh, what we're trying to do in New Jersey now is, uh, and this is just in its infancy, is uh, we, we agree with Bob Bowman we need a new 9-11 commission. New Jersey is unique in that uh, it probably has more connections to 9-11 than any other state or any other jurisdiction. And that being 681 of the victims were from New Jersey, 17 of the 21 counties had victims. The uh, World Trade Center complex was owned by the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey. Uh, one of the hijacked airplanes was out of Newark, New Jersey. The anthrax attacks were in Princeton and Hamilton, New Jersey. The co-terrorists were living and training and conspiring in New Jersey uh, uh, in a number of counties and cities, in particular in Patterson and Essex County, Bergen, uh, frequenting Newark, uh, etc., so there's a lot of connections there. So when Bob Bowman talks about a new 9-11 commission, one of the things that's, that's regrettable for me is I have never met him personally. I know him through videos. I know him through the high praise that people have given of him. And uh, I know towards the end he was basically saying, uh, I've done what I can do. In fact, in one of his videos he makes it sort of a joke. He says, we'll have a new 9-11 commission. And David Ray Griffin and Richard Gage will chair it, <laughs> which is which is that would be pretty good. Uh, and he was he was making fun of it, but he was being serious at the same time. And he was, I think, in a way, being prophetic because I've carried it this far, the torch, and now you guys got to carry it. You know, you got to pick it up and carry it. And that's really what it is: is is people have to carry the torch. And and I'm hoping that in New Jersey we can do that. I, I think there's a, uh, because of the trauma and this intense experience that's been shut down here mentally in a lot of ways. And uh, I noticed when I was involved with architects and engineers trying to organize things and uh, and being on a conference calls, the activity sort of, sort of say, in California where people were, I was really su impressed and surprised that they were so active in there and, and seeing what was in New Jersey that wasn't going like that. And then, but then I'm thinking, well, you know, maybe when you're in the shadows of it, like right here in New York and New Jersey, maybe it's a little harder to get the people to open their eyes up and to start thinking intelligently or logically uh, and asking the right questions. I think the time's come now in New Jersey for that to happen. So what we've done is we have a, a new website. Just, uh, again, it's in its infancy. We just put it up now. It's not done at all, but it's good enough to look at and see where we're heading and for those who are interested, it's uh, www.nj911aware.org. And uh, that will bring you up to a, a, probably a pretty interesting web page, and we're going to try and make it even more interesting. It shows the connections of, of, uh, that New Jersey has. And so now we have all this, which Bob Bowman points out, the, uh, all this oppressiveness from the government through the Patriot Act bill and through the Homeland Security and uh, the uh, undermining of, of, of the process and the uh, unusual confinement and punishment of people without charge, uh, etc., that the civil rights of people are at, at in my estimation, at, I, I work with the Constitution all the time in, in the criminal trials. In defending people, it's never been as this low. I don't think in our, at least in our recent history, where it's so under attack. And a lot of people don't realize it yet. It's, it's all being set up to even get worse. And Bob Bowman realized that. Bob Bowman is a throwback to, I don't want to say old timers, but to people that were far more astute. There's a number of them. We we list him in our heroes page. So if you go onto that website I mentioned. Uh, New Jersey uh, 911aware.org, you'll see Bob Bowman listed number five. It's listed according to the alphabet, so it's just the B with the fifth to the letter. But uh, Bob Bowman is, as I said, he's, he's revered, and he should be. He had so much courage, uh, and 
and I had so much respect for him. And I said, my regret is that I didn't get it personally shake his hand. And but I, I, I have been influenced by him and his philosophy and his belief system of what he's talking about is very similar to mine. I, I haven't heard anything him say that I don't agree with. So, <laughs> so pretty much, uh, you know, and it, it would have been, as I said, it would have been quite an honor to have met him. But uh, in a way, I have spiritually met him in, in the fact that I acknowledge him and, and, and what he's done. And I hear what he's saying. He's saying he's done what he can do. And now he's left, but he hasn't left in spirit, and it's for everyone now to pick up where he's left off. And, and, and people are out there, but for the new people coming in, too, and to carry his torch, because this is that, that flame that he lit it, and has helped keep uh, lighted or lit, uh, is going to really glow into a, a, a giant flame someday, so that even those who don't want to look at the truth are not going to be able to help themselves uh, be looking for them and it's just going to expose it and, and eventually people will, will see through all the, uh, the the coloring and the camouflage that's been put there. Dr. Bob Bowman. What was going through the president's mind gets to the very important question that Jenna asked earlier about culpability and what do we believe and was this just something that dropped into their laps or whatever. We have, in attempting to answer this, we have three different kinds of information. And I'm not going to go into them. You've been exposed to a lot of them uh, tonight and, and will be to more of them. A lot of these pieces of information uh, taken together prove that the official story, the official conspiracy theory of 9-11 is a bunch of hogwash. It's impossible. <clears throat> but they don't prove what really happened and who was responsible. But there's a second group of facts having to do with the cover-up. And, you know, these are a whole bunch of things like the confiscation of the surveillance tapes uh, of the uh, impact on the Pentagon, the uh, confiscation of the air traffic control voice uh, tapes. Uh, it goes on and on and on. Taken together, these things prove that high levels of our government don't want us to know what happened and who is responsible. And then there's a third set of facts that impinges on the president's thinking and all of that. These are the facts of what happened after 9-11. And this is a historical record. Uh, for example, uh, Ashcroft and his cronies got their Patriot Act, which takes away our civil liberties and trashes the Bill of Rights. Uh, Unical got its invasion of Afghanistan and uh, secured a route for oil and gas pipeline for a trillion dollars worth of gas from the Caspian Sea to the Indian Ocean. Cheney's Halliburton got no-bid contracts to support the troops in destroying Iraq and other contracts to rebuild it. <laughs> and more importantly, all those peanut guys, the, the, the neocons, got their invasion of Iraq. They got regime change in Iraq. So the questions come who gained from 9-11, who covered up crucial information about 9-11, and who put out the patently false stories about 9-11 in the first place. When you take those three things together, I think the case is pretty clear that it's highly placed individuals in the administration with all roads 
passing through Dick Cheney. Yes, my name is uh, Chris Cirillo. I'm the former member and organizer of We Are Change Orlando, Florida, and former member of the Veterans for Peace. I wish to thank Andy Steele uh, for inviting me on his weekly radio program on 9-11 Freefall. Uh, I, uh, the main reason I'm calling in is because i uh, like to call out to the listeners if they are unaware of... Uh, Dr. Bob Bowman, a former major in the United States Air Force, who was a, a Vietnam veteran who just recently passed away, a uh, result of cancer that he had developed from Agent Orange, where 786,000 of our veterans uh, were exposed to. And I've met many of those veterans on the streets when I was protesting weekly in my community and the surrounding cities. Uh, I'd like to also give out my condolences to the family, uh, the Bowman family, and uh, the man was a, a great activist. It's a great loss to the movement. He, uh, he uh, really stood out with uh, his uh, videos and lectures, and uh, it's a great loss to everyone. Um, there's just so many activists out there, so many great ones, but he's, he's right up there with Gandhi and Martin Luther King. And we've just lost so many uh, people, famous people, uh, over the years that tried to expose the truth to what's going on around us in our daily lives. And Bob Bowman, God bless him, he was, he was one of them. Uh, it's just that uh, there's, there's so many people out there that are totally unaware of what's going on around them, either a lack of faith or uh, confidence, and lack the wisdom to uh, open their minds to the reality of what's really going on. Um, and as I say, I, my condolences goes out to the family and the great loss of, uh, of a great activist, um, Mr. Bob Bowman. Hi, uh, my name is Jonathan Mark. I'm publisher for Flyby News, flybynews.com. I got involved with 9-11 because of a campaign to uh, stop weapons from entering space. <clears throat> and then um, it was at the uh, Boston um, Tea Party that I met uh, Bob Bowman and discovered that he was uh, director of the Star Wars program when it was still secret under President Ford and Carter's administration. And so um, I talked to him for a little while at the uh, Boston Tea Party um, regarding the Cassini Earth flyby. He thought it was overdone, uh, especially the launching of the, the spaceship. But I guess he understood uh, why I got involved uh, because of the uh, plans for the military to take over space and control the world. And the Cassini flyby was a high-risk flyby. It had 72 pounds of towing on board, traveling at super speeds, like 10 miles per second hit the atmosphere, and an inadvertent um, re-entry of the uh, atmosphere would have released all that plutonium radiation, and uh, it would have been a disastrous. Uh, and <clears throat> the real problem was that NASA was taking over the military, and 9-11 uh, was the thing that united us very close together. So when he came to Greenfield on, on one of his tours, I interviewed him at Greenfield Community Television Station. This was in April 2010. And um, I was able to uh, insert his three-minute uh, video on the uh, W World Trade Center 7 building and just understand uh, his background and his brilliance um, in coming forth with 9-11 as a courageous truth-teller. And, uh, and he first became a uh, whistleblower under President Reagan because the, uh, his colleagues that worked with him under, uh, uh, for Star Wars uh, asked him to because he was retired and he wouldn't have been put in jail for disclosing any secrets. And uh, that's when he started his path of a, as a whistleblower, saying that these uh, uh, Star Wars technologies that they were working on were only offensive in nature and not defensive. So uh, it brought us together. Uh, I am honored in having 
him uh, uh, be interviewed by me, and and uh, and I feel like always uh, I'll be inspired by um, what he went through and what he had to come, and who he still is in my feelings. My name is Massimo Mazzucco. I'm a filmmaker. I made a documentary uh, on 9/11 called uh, "The New American Century." And I'm just about to put out a new one. It's going to be a very big summary on the entire debate of 9-11. It's going to be called uh, September 11, uh, the New Pearl Harbor. Uh, and uh, in regards uh, to, to Bob, I never met him in person. Uh, I did talk to him on the phone though, for 10, 15 minutes uh, last year or a year and a half ago. And uh, he mentioned uh, his cancer to me, I remember that. And I remember telling him, about my documentary, he also made a documentary on cancer called Cancer, the Forbidden Cures. And I said, you know, there was at least 12 or 14 uh, extremely effective uh, natural cures for cancer, which already your oncologist will never tell you about just because, simply because he doesn't know about it. And, uh, but, you know, I wanted to send him, DV- send him the DVD and for him to take a look. But I remember that he wasn't interested, uh, n- not that he didn't believe me, he simply, I felt, I got this very, very uh, specific feeling that he knew exactly what he was doing, where he was at, where he was going, and that he didn't want to change any of that. Uh, I got that feeling of, uh, of uh, destiny and accomplishment at the same time. I mean, it was very, very, very uh, straightforward. And not that he was bluffing or he was being, you know, pretending to be courageous when he was not. He was just exactly the person that I always felt he was when I, when I saw his clips all over the place. Uh, very straightforward and very and, uh, very honest and with himself, first of all. And uh, I think that's really the only way you could expect him to be, after all. I mean, this guy is, you know, always uh, never had fear to speak up with anybody. I mean, if, if the generals in Washington had one-tenth uh, of the courage and the sense of honor and duty that this man had, uh, 9-11 would have probably been exposed much before. Probably would, never, would have never even happened anyway. Anyway, we'll continue the fight that he has started. And uh, one thing that's interesting, though, in, this new, in the new documentary I have, uh, the actual first line of the film is spoken by Bob Bowman. Uh, actually, I pulled the clip for you, and I'm going to play for you very briefly. It's very short. This is the very first line uh, uh, presenting the debate of 9-11 to, to, to the audience. I remember thinking, where on earth are the interceptors? I'm an old interceptor pilot, and it's absolutely unbelievable that hijacked airliners could fly around for an hour and 40 minutes without being intercepted. This is it. I am sorry I never met this person, but I feel like I, I did know him from those very moments I had the, the privilege to talk to him. Thanks very much. The battle to preserve our freedoms is not taking place in Baghdad and Tikrit and Fallujah. It's taking place in peace marches and demonstrations, in Ghirardelli Park in San Francisco, in Memorial Park in Oklahoma City, and in Lafayette Park in Washington, D.C. The front lines are right here. You are preserving our cherished freedoms by exercising them in spite of ridicule and opposition. The battle to preserve our freedoms is you. You are the foot soldiers protecting our civil rights. You're the Minutemen sounding the alarm against tyranny. You are upholding the spirit of the American Revolution. You are preserving the freedoms that the troops in the desert have a right to come back to. The troops getting shot at in Iraq are not protecting us. We are protecting them and their honor and their freedoms. We, my sisters and brothers, are protecting this nation by speaking truth to power. We're speaking truth to a pack of liars. We must do it loudly and fearlessly and courageously and joyfully, for we are the patriots. And when we speak, this is the truth that we proclaim. 
This war in Iraq has nothing to do with national security or freedom or democracy or human rights or protecting our allies or weapons of mass destruction or defeating terrorism or disarming Iraq. It has to do with money, it has to do with oil, and it has to do with raw imperial power. This is Barbara Honiger from Monterey area of California, California Central Coast, calling with my tribute to one of the world's most incredible human beings I've ever met in my life, Bob Bowen. I just want everybody to know that of all the people I have ever met in my life, the individual with the most inherent authority and status as well as publicly recognized authority and status is Bob Bowman. Bob Bowman was one of those few people you meet in your life who has absolute perfect integrity in every word and deed. Uh, I, my heart goes out to Maggie and Bob's many children and grandchildren. We all love him. We know that he is fine and that he will be working even harder to save uh, our country from the horrendous administration past two administrations that have been trying to take us down a very dark path. He's now in a place where he can help us even more. So God bless you, Bob, and Godspeed. So just a few things I'd like your listeners to know, uh, Andy, and that is that I'm uh, on the organizing committee for the big 9-11 Truth Conference that is coming up in Washington, D.C. It will be held uh, at the Pentagon Sheraton overlooking the west face of the Pentagon on September 14th and 15th, Saturday, Sunday, September 14th and 15th. And today, the organizing committee voted unanimously to dedicate our conference to the memory of Bob Bowman, which is a tremendous honor, and we will be adding that to the conference website. So for anyone who wants to see that, in the next few days, this is now August 26th, by August 28th at the latest, go look at the website, and that website is www.dc911conference.org. And check on the program, and probably there on that main page, you'll see Bob's picture and the dedication of the conference to Bob. And it's a big deal, because this is the premier 9-11 conference surrounding this 12th anniversary worldwide. It's going to be dedicated to Bob Bowman. So please tell Maggie and all the kids down there that this is happening. And I'd also like to announce that Mike Fiega, who has been one of the co-organizers of the big recent 9-11 campaign that is gearing up for this 12th anniversary in New York City and across the country and the world with this big advertising campaign, that Mike Fiega and I and Phil Restino who is with Veterans for Peace in the Central Florida uh, group, uh, chapter of Veterans for Peace. It was Bob Bowman's uh, chapter down there. Um, Phil Restino, Mike Fiega, and I are organizing uh, a major action, an activist action for 9-11 Truth and pro-peace, anti-war, for Central Park in New York City for September 8th. That is Sunday, September 8th, between noon and 2 o'clock, Anybody who can be in Central Park, contact Mike Fiega. And um, in order to get his contact information, you'll need to contact me, Barbara Honiger, at area code 804-873-9909. And I will give you Mike Fiega's contact information. This is a very exciting action that we are also dedicating to Bob Bowman. And it, what we're going to do is we are going to iconically represent with activists wearing white versus black t-shirts. We are going to iconically represent and take videos and still photographs and get them on the web before the 12th anniversary to reframe the whole discussion in the media of what 9-11 means. We're going to have a few white t-shirts representing the under 3,000 deaths of Americans and people from 80 other countries, the actual victims of the 9-11 attacks on 9-11 itself, versus in black t-shirts, 
hundreds and hundreds, we hope people show up, hundreds and hundreds of people in black T-shirts to be next to those couple of white T-shirts representing all of the victims of the 9-11 why and the 9-11 wars that stem from the 9-11 why. So this action also is going to be dedicated to Bob Bowman. So anybody who wants to participate in that, we will have a website and a Facebook page soon. Mike Fiega is doing that. Contact me, Barbara Honiger, for Mike's contact information to show up and call everybody you know in the New York and New Jersey areas to show up on September 8th, Sunday at noon in Central Park at a location Mike will tell you. So that's it. Bless you, Bob, and Godspeed. My name is Barry Zwicker. I live in Toronto, Canada. I was the founder and director here of the Six-Day International Citizens Inquiry into 9-11 at the University of Toronto. That was in May of 2004. We invited 40 presenters from three continents. One of them was Bob Bowman. And that's when I met him for the first time. In the years since, my initial admiration for Bob only grew greater. And I'm honored to be among those paying last respects to him. Besides his being a rare combination of compassionate, honest, and courageous, Bob was also very humble and friendly to all in my personal dealings with him. Bob has been and remains a true hero to me. He was also a religious man to me in the best sense, and I say that as a Christian, atheist, humanist. My main hero is the British philosopher and mathematician, social critic, and peace campaigner Bertrand Russell. And just last evening, by chance, I encountered the following quote from Russell in the journal, Russell, the journal of Bertrand Russell studies. In this quotation, Rus Russell avoids taking an either or position on, on Christianity, which is more than interesting, considering he wrote a book entitled Why I Am Not a Christian. And it seems to me that what Russell was saying here I'm going to quote him in a minute, is something that would be very much agreeable to Bob. Let the passage then speak for itself. Here it is. The root of the matter is a very simple and old-fashioned thing, a thing so simple that I am almost ashamed to mention it for fear of the deris derisive smile with which wise cynics will greet my words. The thing I mean please forgive me for mentioning it, is love, Christian love or compassion. If you feel this, you have a motive for existence, a guide in action, a reason for courage, an imperative necessity for intellectual honesty. If you feel this, you have all that anybody should need in the way of religion. Although you might not find happiness, you will never know the deep despair of those whose life is aimless and void of purpose. For there is always something that you can do to diminish the awful sum of human misery. End of quote. Bob lived a tremendously meaningful and useful life along those very lines, finding ways of increasing understanding. And I'm glad to offer these words from a hero of yesteryear, in honor of a current hero who just passed physically, but who is and will remain a hero to me and to so many. So thanks for letting me share. When I responded, by the way, to Phil Restivo's email that Bob was near the end, it occurred to me that a song by the British band Queen, entitled The Show Must Go On, reflected in current culture the thought that Bob's show, if you will, his passionate work for a safer, saner world also must go on and will. They tell me you don't have to be a rocket scientist to run the government. Nevertheless, I am one. <laughs> and although I'm running for Congress from the 15th District of Florida, against an incumbent Republican, which I will not name. 
When I get there in Washington, I'm going to be your congressman. There's a lot of things that I want to do when I get there. There's several of us running who have agreed that our first piece of legislation that we will co-sponsor will be articles of impeachment. <laughs> right up at the top of my list of things to do in Washington, is to take the 9-11 truth movement mainstream. It's time this movement moved out of rented hotels and into the halls of Congress. Now, I'm not going to go through a long list of reasons why I think 9-11 is an inside job. If you guys here don't think that by now, <laughs> too bad. <laughs> I think that would be carrying coals to Newcastle. I, I will say because of my personal experience and personal knowledge as an old interceptor pilot that I have some idea of what should have gone on that morning of 9-11. I know the drill. I know how long it takes. I've flown those missions. And I don't blame the interceptor pilots that morning. I have looked at the timelines and I think they did their best under the circumstances. They would have intercepted whatever it was, hit those buildings, if they had been notified on time. A lot of people say that our government was warned, they knew this was going to happen, and they did nothing. That is not true. If they had done nothing and just let normal procedures take their place, those Twin Towers would still be standing and thousands of dead Americans would still be alive. Now, sometimes when backed into a corner, they try and say, well, it was just incompetence. You know, somebody screwed up. Yeah, they should have notified uh, and scrambled those aircraft as soon as these things went off course as soon as they lost radio communication, as soon as the uh, uh, IFF transponder failed. Uh, any of those three things should have triggered an immediate call for intercept. Any one of those three things. They all happened and time went by and time went by. And those things flew around up there for about an hour and a half. If they had just twiddled their thumbs for 20 minutes and scrambled those jets, they could have intercepted whatever hit the Trade Center before it happened. Now, if this is incompetence, why hasn't anybody been fired demoted, court-martialed. <laughs> now, the people who really had the responsibility that were in the right place to stop this have all been promoted or given the Medal of Freedom. This was not incompetence. 
it was treason. Pamela Senzi. I'm a peace and social justice activist and have been for about eight or nine years. And uh, I've also been involved during throughout that time with the 9-11 Truth Movement. So I, I work for um, the Rethink 9-11 campaign now as campaign coordinator. And Rethink 9-11 uh, is being sponsored by AE 9-11 Truth. Uh, an organization which last year I went across the country on a bicycle for um, with fellow activist, Rena Patty. And during that trek, um, we spoke to police chiefs, fire chiefs, academics, students, and anybody that we could talk to. And we gave them uh, a DVD called 9-11 Explosive Evidence, Experts Speak Out. And this DVD is so important. It is so vital to the future of our country and of mankind itself that Raina and I felt that, you know, if we were willing in order to promote this film, we were willing to leave our, our home, our families, jobs, everything, and go across the country on this bike tour. And Dr. Bowman is in that film. I met him I met him back in 2007. I met him a couple of times uh, that year. He came to our accountability conference uh, for 9-11 in Arizona, where I'm from. And then he also came to Arizona and spoke uh, during a tour for his uh, run for president. And he and his wife toured the country in an RV, wonderful people, uh, very sweet, very endearing, uh, very approachable. And we spoke at length afterward. And I remember standing in the parking lot, all of us, several of us, and um, Dr. Bowman and his wife. And um, he just impressed me as a, a, a man of big heart as well as great stature. And I was particularly impressed that this preeminent insider, this man who had accomplished so much in his life, who was so well educated and, and had um, risen to a, a role of leadership um, in, in the Department of Defense, would go and do this presidential tour, which big big part of the reason that he did it was to promote the need for a new investigation and to question 9-11. And uh, that takes a lot of courage. And certainly uh, it, it, we all knew in those days uh, how risky something like that could be. And those were the days when, when all of the torture stories were coming out and the wars were full throttle and, um, it, you know, it was, it was really scary times. And here he was, you know, just right there with the people uh, going across the country in his RV and speaking to all of us and taking time with each of us. And that's what I would put forth across the country on this trek. Um, I would always refer to Bob Bowman first, always. I did it all across the country. He was my number one guy. And I'd be talking to a police chief or I'd be talking to a fire chief or just a, just a student at a university. And I'd be telling them about this film. And I, I'd say, there are th this is why we're going across the United States on bicycles because thousands of experts are challenging the official story based on hard science and forensic evidence. They're not conspiracy theorists. They're experts, and they're challenging the official story based on science. And just to give you an idea of the caliber of experts, and this is what I would always say, I'd say one of the people in this film 
is Dr. Robert Bowman, Lieutenant Colonel, who is the former Department of Defense Director of the National Strategic Defense Initiative under two presidents. He has two PhDs and a master's, and his postdoctoral expertise is in finite element analysis, which is an advanced mathematics used to determine the cause of structural failures. This man, when he questions 9-11 and when he questions the collapse of those three towers, he knows what he's talking about. And then I'd talk about Building 7, but I'd always put Robert Bowman first. And I have, I, I was uh, very saddened, you know, to hear of his illness and sent out a lot of prayers, a lot of, a lot of light and love. And, you know, I feel as though an incredibly great, great American has, has gone. But he has left us he has footsteps to walk in. He has left us a path to walk because um, of his incredible courage. You know, a lot of a lot of people on the inside like him. The reason we're in this mess that we're in, the reason we've had our liberties taken away, the reason that so many people have been killed in the name of 9-11, and so many draconian measures have been implemented in this country and worldwide, is because people who are insiders, people who are in pivotal positions and know the same things that Dr. Bowman knew, have chosen not to take risk. They've chosen not to risk their position. They've chosen not to risk themselves. They've chosen to keep their position. They've chosen to look out for themselves. And that's why we're in this mess, because a lot of people know and they won't step out like he did, this, this preeminent insider who courageously and tirelessly spoke out and used his used his position, used his expertise, used his incredible education and accomplishment as a means of providing credibility and contributing that, that knowledge and credibility to this movement. And so I really honor people like him and I honor all, all of these experts. And, you know, if, if we can just take a little bit of what he gave us and follow in his footsteps and take our little, our little bit and sum up our bit of courage and come forth. And, you know, collectively, we can tip this paradigm. And I, I, you know, yesterday when I found out about his passing, that's something that I felt like, you know, he, he's, uh, he's now in the company of great Americans like our founding fathers or Kennedy you know, of great, great Americans who have contributed so much and will go down in history with that. And we honor him. We're honoring him now, but we honor him by following that example. And I'll close with this. The quote from Kennedy. Kennedy's inaugural address. And it's Probably the most apropos quote that one could think of for these times. And the quote is, in the long history of the world, only a few generations have been granted the role of defending freedom in its hour of maximum danger. I do not shrink from this responsibility. I welcome it. And that's how... Robert Bowman lived his life, and I only hope and pray that I can follow in that example, at least to some degree, that he did. Bring to the microphone, Lieutenant Colonel Robert Bowman. Thank you.
as a pilot, I concur with Colonel Gap's analysis of the gross improbabilities in the official conspiracy theory. And as an old interceptor pilot, I share his puzzlement over the lack of interceptors that fateful morning. But as a career military officer, I'd like to concentrate on the enormous harm the official 9-11 conspiracy theory has done to our military establishment and to the people in it. Using 9-11 as the excuse, the multinational corporations and bankers have used our brave young troops as cannon fodder in their corporate wars of aggression. They have systematically taken away our constitutional rights, including those of our military personnel. The entire war on terror is phony. And it would be even if you believed the ludicrous official conspiracy theory about 9-11. Both wars were planned before 9-11. The war of aggression against Afghanistan was in retaliation for the Taliban refusing UNICAL rights to build a gas pipeline across Afghanistan to get trillions of dollars worth of gas from the Caspian Sea to their tankers in the ocean. The military leadership knew it had nothing to do with the Taliban harboring Osama bin Laden. The Taliban had offered to give us Osama for trial, but the Bush administration ignored the offer for two reasons. One, they had no evidence against Osama, and according to the FBI, still don't. And two, the war had already been planned in detail to secure that gas pipeline. The war against Iraq was outlined in the PNAC document, Rebuilding America's Defenses, published before George W. Bush even became president. Its purpose was to provide a military staging base from which to control the entire Middle East and its tens of trillions of dollars worth of oil and gas. Now the authors of that document admitted in it that the American people would never go along with their plans unless there was a catalyzing event like a new Pearl Harbor, unquote. Well, 9-11 provided that event. Yet they were unable to tie Iraq to 9-11, no matter how hard they tried. So they came up with a new excuse, WMD, Weapons of Mass Destruction. It is here that we in the military saw through their charade. They had us mass 150,000 troops in one small area in Kuwait, awaiting the start of shock and awe. If our military commanders had even the slightest thought that Saddam Hussein might have had even one WMD, they never would have deployed their troops so that they could be wiped out in a single attack with one WMD. The truth is that our government knew there were no WMD in Iraq. Our people in the military were put in a horrible position, either sacrifice their career and their freedom by refusing orders, or knowingly participate in a war of aggression against their oath of office and the Nuremberg principles enshrined in the Uniform Code of Military Justice. So we have two corporate wars of aggression. Wars in which we are making the same mistake as in my war, Vietnam. We are fighting the people who live there. What has been the result? About 5,500 of our finest have died. 
the lives of 40,000 of our injured soldiers will never be the same. Tens of thousands of our young men and women have severe psychological problems because of what they have seen and what they have done. Hundreds of thousands have been poisoned by depleted uranium and will suffer lives of pain and disability and will father thousands of children with severe birth defects. Our military services are depleted and demoralized. The VA system is underfunded and overwhelmed. The National Guard and Reserves have been subjected to tour after tour, disrupting lives for even the lucky ones who return unscathed. Jobs have been lost, homes have been foreclosed, marriages have been destroyed, children have been estranged, and for what? We have alienated our friends around the world and made new enemies. We have created thousands of new recruits for Osama bin Laden, whether he's alive or dead. And we have further endangered the American people, and all because of 9-11. You know, there's massive evidence of a cover-up with respect to 9-11 itself. I've spoken with both Governor Kane and Congressman Hamilton, the co-chairs of the commission, and they both say that there are outright falsehoods in the final report. Never mind all the omissions. The report over which they had no control. It was written in the Bush White House by Philip Zelikow. Now, when you combine this with the confiscation of videotapes, audio tapes, black boxes, and other evidence by the FBI, it is clear that regardless of who was responsible for 9-11, the subsequent cover-up was itself a conspiracy involving elements of the Bush White House and the intelligence establishment. To prevent further 9-11s, we must get to the truth about all those involved in the last one. If I had the opportunity to, to say something to Dr. Bowman and he were here uh, in front of me right now, I'd say to him, thank you, sir, for your work and what you did throughout your life, even before 9-11, and helping to keep this country alive a little longer. Your work breathes in the voices of everyone who has picked up the torch and carried on this cause. And rest assured, we will have justice and true peace. And the real spirit of America, the one that you stood for, is rising. And if nothing else, know that you saved lives by speaking out and standing up for us. Anyone who wants to check out Robert Bowman's work and make a donation can do so by going to the Patriots webpage at thepatriots.us. Again, that's thepatriots.us, and I'll have it linked up at 911freefall.com, along with the archive of the show for easy access to the listeners. Thanks for listening to 9-11 Freefall's special hour-and-a-half-long tribute to Dr. Robert Bowman. Remember, folks, you can listen to this program every Thursday night at 10 o'clock Eastern, 7 o'clock Pacific on No Lies Radio. This is Andy Steele saying have a great week and good luck.